Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Conceited People Will Corrupt You. Conceited People Will Corrupt You. Some of you all, you recognize an individual who is conceited, full of his or herself, thinking his or herself is better than the next man, the next woman. Some of you all were raised by people like this. You worked with them. You played with them. You even was in the prayer circle with them. Conceited people are everywhere. Self-serving, self-righteous. It's always at the end of the day about self. Conceit. What does the Bible say? Jeremiah 9.23 says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Which part of this scripture says that it's okay to boast, to brag, To get out here on the internet or to get among family and friends at the next holiday gathering and start bragging about your son and your daughter. What part of the scripture says anything about going to a networking event and bragging about your job, your house, your car? But people do this all the time and they think that they're still okay and all right with the Lord. Christians are being rebuked this day because some know better. Some have yet to know better. And this is why this message is important for you because you're not going to win souls to Christ when you keep bragging and telling me about how you're so blessed and highly favored. You're not going to win Let's say me out there in the street, wayward in the faith, acting like a fool on your soapbox talking about how good you got it. This is why some individuals, they don't want anything to do with believers because they saw you dancing around on the stage, screaming and yelling about how good you got it. They saw how you were around your family and how you bragged about your wonderful marriage and your beautiful children. You're doing this in front of people who are spiritually malnourished, starved. I don't need you to talk about what God gave you. I need for you to tell me what God going to give. Say what? Me. (laughs) You see, because somebody who is broke, busted and disgusted thank you for your example thank you for telling me that god has done all these wonderful things but i need you to give me the step by step the blueprint the plan on how i can do what needs to be done to get blessed to be highly favored or whatever else you oh self-righteous one like to talk about do you know that you can be conceited just by the type of pictures you put up that's why I don't like having my face plastered everywhere because there is this temptation especially for you ladies you know how this goes where when you got makeup or you got filters or you see how pretty a picture comes out there's that temptation to kind of you know just stare right or in a video just whoo I look good that day type of thing and if you're doing that you know somebody out there is doing that too and is that person coming to your social media page or to your channel or wherever you are are they there for God or are they there for your pretty face hmm You see, a lot of pretty faces, very easily distracted by the pretty face. And what did you say again? Hmm. I understand that folks got to sell 
you know, their products and they've got to draw people in. But there comes a point where even God will say, that's enough. That's enough showing off your house and your car and your face and your family and all of that. You need to humble yourself. Some folks are wondering how come they're going through as much as they're going through. I am walking with you, Lord. I am trying to do what's right. But it seems like I'm always having these problems. Yeah, because somewhere along the line, God is convicting us all on some areas of our lives that need to be dealt with. And in this audio message, we got some conceited people. We got some conceited people that we are no longer allowed to sit around, no longer allowed to talk to. No longer allowed to visit. She bragged too much. At the end of the day, she bragged too much. And God got a hold of her and brought her down low. And some of you all, you know who the her is in your life, the she. Some of you others. That man always has something to talk about. His money, his car, his house, his clothes, his intelligence, his everything. And then God brings them down low. It doesn't feel so good at the bottom. God takes you back to the hood. He takes you back to the struggle bus. You at the bus stop. Getting ready to get on the struggle bus, somebody. They don't know how far you have fallen. But those of us. Who God warned us that a butt whooping was coming. We know. And that's why we didn't want that butt whooping. That's why we went on and we said, okay, Lord Jesus, I come to you and I ask for mercy. I ask for your grace. I ask to be a better person. I mean, people was just throwing out all sorts of prayers. I felt that in the spirit. And I joined you all in the spiritual realm. Because I didn't want you to get your butt whooped. Because, like I said, we got that part that we talk about God and his love and how, you know, his mercy follows us and he's such a good God. But then somebody skipped over the Old Testament where God dealt with disobedience and rebellion. He dealt with the liars and he dealt with those who were conceited and bragged about their property and all of what they had. David, he was out there telling his um, assistant to count how many How many uh, soldiers he had. Did God tell you to do that? You see. You got Pharaoh. Probably was walking around. Talking about look. I got all these Israelites working for me. (laughs) Until God sent his leader and said. Oh. You got to let my people go. You see. We got some individuals that. They don't mind walking through the plant. Walking the main floors of offices. They don't mind walking a construction site or walking down a street where they have many properties and talking about all of what they got. And when God gets a hold of you and when you start to see that there are those things around you that are falling down quickly, systems are falling down, Money is not where it used to be. Your right hand man is no longer supporting you or the group is no longer working as hard as they once worked. You really don't have nothing to brag about. But some individuals got to keep that front up so they keep telling you that things are fine when they're really not. And don't let them convince you otherwise. My eyes see that you have fallen, soldier. My eyes see that you have fallen, mother. My eyes see that you have fallen, father. My eyes see that you have fallen, husband. My eyes see that you have fallen, wife. My eyes see that old son or daughter you have fallen so low. We got the liars in the camp. They became that way because they couldn't tell us the truth. Proverbs 3, 7, be not wise in your own eyes. That was their first mistake. When some of us was warning some people, this is what you're supposed to do. This is where you're supposed to go. God said, God said, God didn't tell you. I remember years ago. I didn't need to be struck by lightning 
or have some kind of supernatural event take place. When God spoke to me, I was minding my own business in my room and the Lord started revealing some things to me. I went running to my mother, telling my mother, God said this, God said that. And she said, God, don't talk to you like that. I ain't never heard of nobody, you know, hearing from God as much as you say. And I said, I don't know why he talk is talking to me. Maybe he's catching up. Come on. Maybe he's catching up with me for all the times that I ignored him. Lord Jesus, if God is talking to you on a regular basis, chances are is that maybe somewhere along the line, you did a lot of ignoring. And today he's talking to some people about their conceitful ways. They're so wise in their own eyes. They think they know so much about the Lord and about the children and about the grandchildren and about the husband and the wife. And the Lord says that, don't you know, <laughs> I've downloaded a new spirit in that one. Don't you know that if anything, you need to get right. Proverbs 3, 7, be not wise in your own eyes. What are you supposed to do when God is convicting you on some things that you know is, ooh, she's stepping on my toes. You're supposed to fear the Lord. And what else? You're supposed to turn away from evil. Even a child knows that after a while, you can't keep doing what you're doing. Because when mama find out, uh-oh, come on. When daddy find out, at some point, you got an opportunity to turn away from evil or otherwise you're going to learn the hard way. That's what I mean by that butt whooping coming for some people. Because we warned you, we told you, we said that God is coming for that man who's haughty. He's coming for that woman who's conceited, got a booty stuck all out, wanting the world to see everything that she got. Getting out here on these social media pages talking about, yeah, y'all jealous. Oh, really? No, we're not jealous. I'm nervous for you because see, God's protection that was once around you, he lifts that off and then those minions come after you. The wolves and sheep, sheep's clothing show up and show out. Some folks say, well, why is it that God just lets these things happen to some people? Because, see, you didn't see what they were doing prior to the abuse, Lord Jesus. You didn't see what they were carrying that God told them to let go of prior to their downfall. You didn't see the people or hear the people around them telling them, for some of you all, some of you all, you did see and you did hear, but some didn't. And so they're in the dark talking about, I don't understand why so-and-so is going through. Don't worry about so much why so-and-so is going through while some of you all puff yourselves up with pride. Because that's what they did when I was getting abused. There were those that were saying, see, mm -hmm, I knew she was always that one, you know, so trusting. And, you know, she get herself caught up in all these weird situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't be doing this and that. Oh, some of you all, you remember those times listening to that haughty sister or brother or that haughty cousin or somebody else who thought that they even looked at you haughty, right? Thought that they... You know, it was so much better than you until whoo, we heard stories and we heard that you made some poor decisions. Matter of fact, some of you all, y'all, you guys got secrets that you can't even go anywhere and talk to anybody about because you still with your abusers. I got away. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? And yet some folks, this is the kind of foolishness that they will put out here on us when they've seen us fall low. And talk about how we made stupid decisions or foolish decisions or whatever else. And it's like, but we know your story. We just didn't wash your face with it. But we know who you really are. Not the one that the victims had put out there and said how wonderful and great and loving and kind and sweet. Mm -mm. We know the evil one, you see. And there's many a so-called good men and so-called good women that got a dark side. And we got to experience some of that, didn't we? You see, but they get out here in the public and they're so full of themselves. It hurts. It hurts when we do see people fall. Not that long ago, myself and a relative, we had heavy tears in our eyes because God revealed to us what was going on. 
And just when you think that you're going to run around and say, "Uh uh-huh, paybacks is, and you know what, it's interesting how that didn't happen. Instead, you're hurting just like that person. You're feeling bad. You're wishing something better would happen. You see? So sometimes it doesn't take that turn like some of you all think. The burden is heavy. Some of you all want to go back and save the abuser because you see that the butt whooping is happening. But don't do that, though, because you get in the way of God working on somebody. You get swept right up under that foolishness right along with them. You end up experiencing the wrath of God. No, uh, uh-uh, get out the way. I told some people years ago, you standing in the way of the narcissist. God wants to deal with that narcissist and you keep jumping in front. You better move out the way while that belt is swinging. Some people go, ooh, that's harsh. Yeah, sometimes it takes a harsh whipping in the spiritual realm for somebody to go. I'm finally brought down low. I'm to my knees crying out. I'm asking, oh, Lord Jesus, to have your way with me. I am a sinner. I have messed up. This time it was really bad. That's somebody's truth. There's some folks who they know they've done some real evil things, especially in a black community, so-called black leaders. I see it in their eyes on some of these YouTube uh, channels. They know they messed up big time. But, you know, they won't allow. They won't allow that conviction to change them. They won't allow for the Lord to expose them through their own mouth, through their own mouth. I'm not talking about a whole bunch of people exposing them. I'm talking about just out of their own mouth. They won't humble themselves and say that they apologize. And I messed up and I thought this plan was going to work. Or initially, this is what I did. However, here are the changes. Here's how we're going to make wrongs right. Won't do it. And so then God, he allows all these people to rise up and say, okay, here's what's really going on. Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Proverbs twenty six twelve. What are we supposed to do? We're not supposed to be seated around the conceited people and encouraging them like some victims do who are not ready to become survivors by getting away. They sit up there and they trust in the abuser. They trust in the pimp, the player, the hustler. They trust in the conceited one because he's fun, because she makes me laugh. Oh, I don't care that she brags and boasts about because she's just so cool to be around. But your manners are being corrupted by that evil one. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. We got some individuals who, because they listen to grandma a little long, (laughs) And they listen to mama over the course of their lives here and there. And they borrowed a few things. They consider themselves to be wise. You don't have an anointing like that. And so what happens is, is that you take a look and you see how they've fallen so low. They will even say, I'm wise. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're not supposed to be running around saying things like that. But I, okay, well, let somebody else say that. Matter of fact, you need to prove your case. What suffering have you gone through? What teachings have you listened to? Have you implemented any of the things that you've learned? Romans one twenty two says, claiming to be wise, they became fools. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice proverbs twelve fifteen, and some of you are you're wise every day every day because god speaks to you and you listen you follow instruction i got one particular son who he says you know what he said i know god is with you mom because some of the things that you say and the things that you do and then it turns out that it's right 
initially it don't seem like it because it may be an instruction that oh it's going to be inconvenient you know I'm going to suffer because it is uh you know and then the next thing you know he's like oh now I get it you see but we got some of the rebellious ones Isaiah 5 21 Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. So they're going to do what they want to do. It's about their path that they want to be on. 1%, maybe a little more than that. One of the polls that we took on this channel. 1% or a little more are not believers. They don't believe in God. They don't mind listening to the messages, being entertained, laughing, having a good old time. But they they don't believe in God. All I can do is just pray. But there's nothing to brag about. Saying things like, Yeah, I don't believe in God. That's nothing to brag about. Or I do my own thing. Because there are those individuals who I spoke to in person. Who they have a haughty spirit about them. When it comes to their their unbelief. So, I may not be able to convince you on this side. And that's all good, right? Because, hey, we don't want to be the dictator. We don't want to be forcing the Bible down people's throats. I used to hear that all the time. Just because somebody was upset about something, you know, convicting. But God, he'll have his way on the other side. You don't need me to convince you. Because God, once again, has his way of doing some things that before it's all said and done, somebody is going to say, oh, yes. And then that 1% will be less than 1%. (laughs) because sometimes like I said before you got to experience the good bad and otherwise and be convinced by it in order for you to say okay Abba Father Abba Father Abba Father and that conceit falls away when you've been shamed in front of the masses That conceit falls away when people see that you're suffering. The conceit falls away when you've lost everything. The relationship, the job, your health, what little assets that you saved up or you invested. Brought down low. I'm feeling somebody's pain. Right down low. I'm feeling somebody's hurt. Right down low. God had been knocking on your door, knocking on your door. I need you to give up some things. Throw those things out. Throw those things outside the door. I understand that you don't want to let me in. You cracked open the door just enough to hear me say, Come follow me. But you said you weren't ready. This is somebody's truth. So you threw some of the things out the door. You know, you were prompted by some of the messages, moved a a bit. But God says, I need you to come out now. I need you to come out from behind that door and stop opening up that door just a little bit. I need you to open it up real wide and I need you to let me in or either you come out and you meet me. Lord Jesus, because you've been hiding for so long behind your wealth, your health for some folks who haven't lost yet. You've been hiding so long behind that title, that degree, that certificate. You've been hiding so long behind those real nice cars that you drive and that house that you maintain and that yard that you work so hard on. But the Lord says, I need you to come from out of that and come be with me. And how do you do that? You've got to humble yourself. If you can't get on your knees and you sit on the side of the bed, you've got to drop that head 
and say, I give up. I surrender. God, you're too mighty for me. I can't keep going on like this. I've got a void in my heart, and I need your love to fill it. Because I don't have the women, and I don't have the men, and I don't have anything else around me that's going to fill that void. I've done everything. I've tried everything. And now God says, try me. Some folks, they want to get in the ring with the Lord. Okay, he's good with that too. But you know your hands are too short. Your arms are too short to box with an almighty God. But if you want to go in the ring with the Lord rather than come humbly with a, a humbled heart, confessing sin and repenting, he'll box, he'll wrestle, he'll throw you to the ground. <laughs> in a spiritual round. Don't challenge God like that. I don't advise it. Whether you're a saint or a sinner, I don't advise it. Proverbs 28, 11, a rich man is wise in his own eyes, but a poor man who has understanding will find him out. The poor man, the poor woman who sat across from the rich man was studying, was learning that rich man. Some of us, we were called to speak a word to a rich man, to a rich woman. But before we could speak that word, the Lord caused us to observe, to, observe, to study. You can't talk to a rich man who's conceited, full of himself, like you can a poor man who's full of himself. It's a different conversation. It's a different way of bringing them to Christ. And God gives you the tools in order to do so. The rich man is what is in it for me, what's in it for me. Even a poor man's like that too. But the poor man has been broken for so long that after a while it's like I don't really care <laughs> what's in it for me just take this cup this burden from me Lord Jesus Jesus who was on the cross even called out to his father asking him to take this cup from me the burdens can be so great they can be so heavy We can't in the in this hour, in this season, in these last days, trust in ourselves, in our own mind. That's foolish. Proverbs twenty eight twenty six says, Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. So you're grasping what you can in order to parent effectively. You're grasping what you can as the Lord gives you. The knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the examples, the teachings, the preachings to be able to get through this life with that person who you have committed yourself to. To be able to get up each and every day to go to work once again. Lord Jesus, I need you. I can't do this all by myself, says the mother who is stressed out about her children, about her money, about her relationship, or lack thereof. Lord Jesus. So you understand that we cannot be wise in our own sight. We can't walk around here bragging about all of what we've done, where we have come from and all that. There is a time for that. Usually that's at a job interview because <laughs> they need to be convinced that you know, you are a worthy candidate. But do you need to prove yourself to folks who aren't going to sign a check for you? Hmm. We don't we don't appoint recent recent converts, new employees, fresh out the box, trainees to leadership roles. We don't appoint children to leadership roles. Does anybody know why we don't do that? 
We don't treat these people as our equal when we're in leadership roles or when we're anointed and appointed to speak God's word. Once again, does anybody know why we don't do that? Because they will be puffed up with conceit. First Timothy 3, 6, he must not be a recent convert or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. And some of you all, that's what you did with some of these young people. And that's why when you're trying to put them back in the box or put them in their place, or some of you others trying to put that brother or that sister on their square, they're not going to do it. Because I remember what you said. Some of you all, you got spoiled husbands and wives. You puffed them up. And you know it, some of you all. And now you got such a hard time with that person or with that group. You can't tell me nothing. Mm. All the complimentary items that one gave and all of the flattery that the group shared with the new convert. And he's walking around telling business. And she's walking around talking about how she got the favor. And they just love her. I remember someone in a managerial role. I don't know what she was tripping on that day, but she decided to just come over and tell me about all this favor she had with uh, these people. who were investors and owners and things like that. And I was like, really? You know, I'm not trying to knock the person off their, you know, makeshift soapbox. But then another person who knew her longer than I did said, they don't, they don't like her. I said, well, what do you mean? Because according to her, she claims that she got favor with these people. And that she can get certain things done. He said they don't like her. They just tolerate her. Don't believe everything she says. I said, oh, okay. You see. Sometimes people know that they're not liked. They know that they're not respected. But they're going to tell you something different. Because they figure you don't know any better. You're new. You see. And they also do that sort of thing because that's their way of controlling, controlling those that are new early on. Like if you act like you're going to go over here and talk behind my back or tell on me, this way you know that I'm already connected. I'm good with so-and-so. Meanwhile, folks are like, who's that person? (laughs) What's their first name or their last name? Conceited people will do that. They will act as if... Everybody knows them, likes them. They've got a good rapport with people. You know, they'll act like they know the group that they are trying to impress. And meanwhile, they're like, look, this is just a work acquaintance, says the group or, you know, the coworker or what have you. Or I don't know her like that, so I can't really tell you how good of a worker she is. (laughs) You see? And when you find that sort of thing out, it does make you feel some kind of way about that person. You're such an exaggerator. You're such a liar. Those people don't even know your last name. Matter of fact, they don't even recall whether you even work there or not. You see? That's why you don't puff you don't puff yourself up and puff other people up if you don't know. If you don't know them. But some folks are so caught up in impressing other people. You know, I've got to win favor. I've got to be friends with, okay. And sales tactics, you know, they're there. They're manipulative, but they're there. And there's a time and a place for everything. But don't do that to your family. (laughs) Don't do that to your family, to your friends. We know you. Be transparent with us. But some folks won't do it because they're conceited. 
2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty for people will do what or be what? For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceits. There it is. There it is right there. Swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying his power, avoid such people. And businesses have created extensive programs, apps, web pages for many years that feed into everything that the scriptures warn us about. Oh, let's create an app. That is going to draw those who are lovers of themselves, as well as the conceited ones, and those who are lovers of pleasure. Let's create oh, a website, a website for all of those who love money. And, oh, there's a market, there's a market for those rebellious sons and daughters who are wanting to vent about their, about their parents, knowing full well that they're disobedient and unruly, disrespectful, but you see. So when they feed into the very things that God has warned us about, they make money. And you're not a better person using these tools. If I'm around individuals who are swollen with conceit, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, appearing like they're so wise, right? godly and so forth eventually i'm going to be in the ocean drowning right along with them i'm trying to keep some of you all away from these sorts of individuals you're never too old to receive wisdom you will never know so much that you can't receive a word that reminds you about that adult son or adult daughter and what you need to say or what you need to stop saying to them and let God have his way. There are those, once again, in families, in friendships, aiding the conceitful people. Stop it. You aid them when you're buying them yet another gift that they can brag about and show off. You're aiding them when you're so just uh, praising them all the time about, oh, you're so good. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's wonderful. Sometimes we got to withhold the praise. You don't get your little sticker on your forehead today. <laughs> You're being reminded of all of the things that you should not be doing concerning certain people in your life. Oh, how wise. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how great. And, you know, we all appreciate compliments, you know, a like here, a smile there, a heart there. But don't let it go to your head. Remember, some individuals will say that sort of thing. Don't let it go to your head. This is why we still got thorns. Second Corinthians 12, 7. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited, from becoming conceited. Let me say that again for someone. When you're asking the Lord, why, why can't you just remove some of these things that I'm going through? It just doesn't make sense. But then if you take the time out to listen to how you talk and how you deal with other people and how sometimes you're going through your share of issues and it comes out in a mean spirited, negative way, conceited. Come on. This is why the thorn is not going anywhere. It's going to bring you right back and humble you. It's going to bring you right back to, oh, Lord, I need you like never before. Exactly. Some of us conceit. That's the last place. 
that we can be because we got so much wrong at times. Not all the time, but at times. Within our bodies. Sometimes there's so many people around us that they're going through and they're saying so much negative to us that there's no there's no way you're not even in the environment where conceit can be cultivated. <laughs> now, when somebody is cussing you and fussing you on a regular basis because of the type of job you have, there's no room for being conceited. There are plenty of folks that don't know anything about this channel. They don't know. And it's not for me to tell them unless God says. Second Corinthians 12, 7, once again, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. And some of you all were told that that was a curse or that it was some kind of generational thing and it was wicked and all this other stuff. When God already delivered you and you know you've been delivered, what is hanging over you is not a curse. It is something that keeps you humble. That's what it is. Every now and again, this thorn in my side starts to bother me. It keeps me up at night. Every now and again, I just don't feel like dealing with people like I would like to deal with people. Mm -hmm. It keeps you humble, don't it? Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. And some of you all, please be reminded once again to not fall for the devil schemes using these so-called just got it going on type of people to lure you. Please. Because there's more and more of them rising up, acting as authorities. Making you feel like you're something special when the spirits within them are on assignment to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Animal Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. And thank you.